Today I'll be uh, talking about 3D printed modular soft grippers with integrated metamaterials for conformal grasping. This is a project that we have done at the University of Wollongong in Australia and along with the ARC Center of Excellence for Electromaterials Science, which is also based in Australia. So the main objective of this project was to really fully 3D print in one manufacturing step, a soft gripper that is integrated with a metamaterial that, it's, that can increase or enhance its grasping performance. And for the printing, we chose fused deposition modeling, as we will see later on, because it's accessible and affordable, as our colleagues mentioned uh, before. So just to uh, talk a little bit about the design process, like how do we start, from where do we start, and what's the end result? So usually we start with a mechanical design, and we try uh, as much as possible for our designs to be bio-inspired whenever we're talking about soft robotics, because they are really inspired by nature. So we start with the mechanical design and we uh, perform the 3D modeling, bearing in mind that uh, these structures or these actuators and materials or metamaterials will be 3D printed using fused deposition modeling, which is the uh, 3D printing technologies or technology we are using, simply to optimize the parameters or 3D printing parameters needed in order to get, for instance, in our case, airtight pneumatic actuators. So for this uh, type of particular grippers, uh, for this study, we used soft pneumatic actuators. So we need air as an input in order to inflate them so they can generate the required bending motion. Then we optimize the slicing parameters in order to get the desired airtight and functional soft pneumatic actuators and metamaterials with the desired performance. And after that, we can assess experimentally the performance of the actuators and metamaterials in terms of the force output, deformation, and grasping performance. But prior to that, there's a very important element in the design process, which is the finite element modeling simulations. So simply we characterize the material or the soft material used in the 3D, uh, for 3D printing the actuators. And based on its characterization, we extract its stress strain data. And based on that, we can develop a hyper elastic material model that can be used in finite element simulations. Now, this is a very important step because it allows us to really go through hundreds of designs very quickly, very efficiently before we 3D print or fabricate any actuator or metamaterial. So we can quickly assess it and the error is usually less than 50%, uh, less than 5% between the real physical prototype and the simulated prototype, which is really great whenever we want to go very quickly and efficiently through hundreds of designs. And finally, we characterize experimentally and we compare the experimental results with the finite element modeling results. So just to talk a little bit about the modeling of the uh, fingers that constitute the soft actuator. So here we have a, a soft finger. So as you can see, we have the soft pneumatic finger and on top of the soft pneumatic finger, we have what we call a metamaterial, which is composed of two main structures. We have compliant ribs, which are inspired by the fin ray structure, which is found in fish, so it's bio-inspired, and we have a layer of an exotic structure which, add, uh, which adds additional compliance as we will see later on in the videos. And for this, we have a zigzag uh, structure, which shows a zigzag structure, which is kind of a novel structure when it comes to soft pneumatic actuators to avoid any uh, contact between the walls once the uh, actuator is uh, activated. And as I mentioned, we have used 3D printing, and specifically, we have used Ninja Flex, which is a thermoplastic polyurethane, which is commercially available and accessible as well. So we can really bring soft robotics to the uh, community as low-cost, accessible, and affordable uh, robots. So for the FEM simulations, basically what we can predict is both the deformation, and the output force of the actuators. And when we say deformation, it means we can predict both the bending angle at different input pressures and the behavior or the bending behavior of the actuator at different uh, pressure inputs, as you can see in the top figure uh, here. Also, we can predict the blocked force, which means how much force 
will be exerted by the tip of the actuator once it is inflated at different, of course, input pressure. So these are really important results and we can really predict those and optimize them before we print any soft actuator solely in the, from the finite element modeling or finite element simulations, which is really a very important uh, step in the design process of soft pneumatic actuators. So here's an example showing side by side the difference between or the comparison between the experimental and bending deformation. As we can see that the FAM simulations can predict very accurately the uh, or the real bending behavior of the actuator. So uh, just to mention a point here that we have used also FEM simulations in order to predict or uh, uh, analyze the contact behavior of the fingers with and without the metamaterial. Because the main objective of adding the metamaterial, as we mentioned in the beginning, is to increase the conformability or increase the contact area, in other words, between the objects being grasped and the fingers uh, of the soft uh, gripper. So here, for instance, we have different shapes from arbitrary shapes to round shapes to spherical shapes. And we actuate the finger with and without the metamaterial. And after that, we can compare the output stress or output pressure applied on the surface. So we can clearly see that without the inclusion of the metamaterial, the stress is high and it can be dramatically reduced or the contact uh, pressure or stress can be dramatically reduced with the inclusion of the metamaterial and up to 8.5 times in some cases. So we have a 4.2 uh, times reduction, five times reduction for the sphere and 8.5 times for the rounded bar just with the inclusion of metamaterial. So this tells us that we have a more uniform distribution of stresses and we have a larger contact area, which is better for the grasping performance of a soft a gripper. So after we have performed the finite element modeling, we tested experimentally the uh, performance of the soft grippers when it comes to uh, grasping. So we have performed 2D grasping performance experiments and 3D. And when we say 2D, it means we only have two fingers. So we are operating in a plane, 2D plane. And for 3D, we have more than two fingers, which can be two, uh, three, four, five, whatever fingers we wish, as we will see later on, as these soft robotic grippers are uh, modular. So we can easily uh, change the number of fingers. So for the two fingers gripper, we show in the top figure that without the inclusion of the metamaterial, the gripper couldn't grasp an egg, uh, a lemon, an apple, and an avocado. So in all, in all the four cases, it couldn't grasp. So it is soft, it generates, it is passive, it can, uh, it can adapt to the shape of the objects. But for this particular case, we are showing that just by being soft or just by being inherently soft is not enough for a successful grasping whenever we, are, whenever we have a 2D soft gripper. However, in the uh, bottom figure where the metamaterial is included, we can see that the gripper can easily grasp all the four objects and it can passively adapt to the shape of the egg, to the shape of the lemon, to the shape of the apple and the mango simply because the contact area is increased and the conformability or shape matching of the object is enhanced with the inclusion of the metamaterial. For the 3D printing grasping performance, the same experiment is performed. So we have the four same objects, uh, the egg, the lemon, the apple, and the avocado. And we show that, for instance, that for the egg with three fingers, the gripper couldn't grasp it. For the lemon, it could grasp it, but we can see that the fingers really exhibit out of plane deformation. And it is proven in the soft robotics literature for soft grippers, whenever you have out of plane deformations, which means that the bending is not in a plane, so it will just go out of the plane, the bending motion, then this will dramatically affect the, perf uh, the uh, performance, grasping performance, and will reduce the grasping capability of the gripper. So we have seen this behavior for the three and four fingers. For the apple, for instance, it's all also observed, but it's much more severe and similarly for the avocado. However, when we include the oxetic structure, 
along with the compliant trips or the metamaterial, we can see that the finger can successfully grasp all the four uh, fruits and the, uh, the egg and the three uh, fruits, which again proves that this metamaterial increases the conformability and the success rate when it comes to grasping different objects with different weights, shapes, textures, and differences. So here we will see some videos just to see, uh, to see it. Uh, uh, it's more fun to see it always in video. We will see the 2D grasping performance with and without the inclusion of the metamaterial. So th for the first one, we can see that a two finger gripper without the integration of the metamaterial could not grasp the egg. However, after the addition or inclusion of the metamaterial, once it's activated, it could grasp successfully the egg. Similarly for the 3D performance, so we can see the out of plane deformations. Once it tries to uh, grasp the apple, then once the metamaterial is included, it can match its shape, uh, reduce the uh, pressure and grasp it successfully. And finally, for the four finger gripper, we can see that the same behavior out of plane deformation, uh, which leads well, or uh, that leads to unstable grasp or a failed grasp. And finally, for the four fingers, once the beta material is included, the gripper can successfully grasp the lamp. So, why these grippers are called modular uh, three different soft grippers? Because we can easily uh, change the number of fingers. So we have a, a the green a base which contains six slots. So we can have two, three, four, five, and or even six. Or we can even customize since the uh, both the fingers and the base are 3D printed. We can easily customize them to suit any application. So for this particular work, we had three different configurations: two fingers, three fingers, and four fingers. So the gripper can be easily modulated or the number of fingers can be easily changed depending on the desired application. And with the change in fingers, different objects with different weights, shapes, textures, and stiffnesses can be grasped. So we can grasp objects from very, that are very soft to objects that are really uh, stiff and have uh, complex shapes. So here's an example showing the three fingers, just to show modularity at the same time, grasping different objects. And just to note that the meta material and the soft fingers were printed all together simultaneously in one manufacturing steps without any need for post-processing. So we can just pull them out of the printer and activate them. They are completely airtight and functional. So to conclude, we have developed 3D printable uh, modular soft grippers with integrated metamaterial to enhance the grasping performance of uh, soft grippers in general. We have used, decided to use uh, off-the-shelf soft materials known, com known commercially as Ninja Flex, which is a thermoplastic polyurethane in the market, just to make these grippers accessible, affordable for the community, along with open source FDM 3D printers. So for this particular work, we have used the Flash Forge Creator Pro. We have used finite element modeling, which we always do uh, as a uh, important step in the design process in order to optimize the performance and predict the performance of the soft actuators and the metamaterial prior to their fabrication. And finally, we have characterized the soft uh, grippers in terms of their grasping performance when it comes to 2D and 3D grasping performance. Thank you very uh, much for your time and attention. I would like just to uh, uh, thank the ARC Center of Excellence for Electromaterial Science and the University of Wollongong for supporting this work. And of course, the authors of this work, uh, Professor Gursel Aliji, Dr. Rahim Mutlu, and myself. Thank you very much. Uh, if you would like to know more, please feel free to reach out and I am happy to answer any questions. Thank you.